Scientifically, polygraphs are more accurate than eyewitness testimony, yet their results are not admissible evidence in Texas courts. But anything you say in that post-polygraph interview might be. So why is that? I'm Laura Alexandria Serra, this is Lawyer Talk Thursday, and you're about to find out. Today, we're talking all things polygraph. So in the movies, it looks like the polygraphs are the end all be all of guilt innocence. They're not, that's just Hollywood. So what is a polygraph? So a polygraph is a process that includes a test and a device that tests your physiological response to a series of questions. It's also known as a lie detector test. It comes in three stages, your pre-interview, your data collection phase or the instrument phase, and your post-polygraph interview. That's where they really get you. The device actually measures your blood pressure, pulse, respiration, perspiration, skin conductivity, and any movement or fidgeting. Changes in those things indicate that you may be deceptive. These tests are no joke, and that's why I laugh when 70% of you said that you could be a polygraph. Yeah, right. If you Google pictures of a polygraph test, you'll see that you'll be strapped up to the machine with sensors on your stomach and your back, a blood pressure cuff on, something measuring your pulse, sensors underneath your palms to measure your perspiration or sweat, and movement pads underneath your body and sometimes on your feet. Good luck. And I know some of you are saying, well, Alex, I Googled and it said I could beat a polygraph not with a trained examiner. Scientifically, most of those techniques like screaming in your head, fidgeting, toe tapping, biting your cheek or tongue, do not work. So my pro tip is just don't take a damn polygraph. The biggest issues with polygraphs are their reliability and consistency because the trained examiner, whether a newbie or an expert, really matters. And then the way that they measure deception. So you're not gonna be scored on a polygraph. There's just gonna be three results. No deception indicated, no opinion, and deception indicated. Now, the problem is, is when they're measuring these responses, they can't tell what type of lie it is. Was it an omission? Was it a white lie? Was it a big, big lie? So the definition of deception is up in the air until they get to that post-poly interview. So let me give you an example. Let's say they ask you, have you stolen anything in the past two years? And you answer no, but you lying. They don't know whether it's you stole a stick of gum out of your mom's purse or committed $100,000 of insurance fraud. So guess what? They're gonna ask you about that spike that indicated lying in the post polygraph interview. Now you're sitting there, all the sensors are off and they're about to ask you some questions. If they have no deception indicated, they're gonna tell you, you did not pass the test. Same thing if they have no opinion about your deception. But if there's deception indicated, they will say so. And they will go through and ask you about each of those spikes and indicators. And in most cases, people spill their guts. And this is when it becomes admissible evidence because if they're smart in the pre-interview, they've read you your Miranda rights if this is an investigation for a criminal case and it's on video. And those are the two prerequisites to have your statements admissible against you in case you admit a little bit of a crime. So don't do it and keep your mouth shut. If you've been asked to take a polygraph, it occurs in three circumstances. You're charged or suspected of a criminal offense. All they're doing is searching for evidence. Don't take one, lawyer up. Especially you soldiers, stop agreeing to polygraphs. If you've already agreed to take one, you can change your mind. Do not do it, lawyer up. The second instance would be private employers. Newsflash, y'all can't request polygraphs from your employees or potential employees. It's prohibited under federal law. Now there's a few exceptions like private companies that contract with the government for counterintelligence or armored vehicle drivers, but those are exceptions to the rule, generally not allowed. And third, if you're applying for a government or law enforcement jobs, those are allowed like the FBI, Border Patrol, or police. So you're gonna have to take those to get into the academy, for example, but in other instances, do not do it. So again, do not take a polygraph, never agree to one, because the fact that you refused a lie detector test 
or ask for a lawyer can never be used against you in court. And if you're sitting there saying, well, I have nothing to hide, it can't help you either. It can't be used in court. So don't waste your time and don't take the risk.